Hello, hello. Hey everybody and welcome to this Microsoft Flight Simulator video. Today on our How to Flight Sim series, we're going to go through the startup procedure for a Cessna 172 Skyhawk. This is the steam gauged version. We'll also have a look at the G1000. The objective here, uh, rather than pressing Control and E, for an automatic startup, we're going to go through it ourselves step by step. Uh, you know, it's going to be limited to that of what the sim will do for us. Uh, no real world procedures. But if you want to know how to start the airplane uh, by following a certain type of flow, well, this is how we're going to do it. So, welcome to the cockpit of the 172. And again, this is the steam gauge version. We'll also have a look at the G1000 shortly. Uh, so, to begin, there is a click spot at the yoke. If you just move the mouse down, you'll see that the pointer changes to like a finger. If you click here, it'll disappear at the yoke. Now, for whatever reason, when you start up in Flight Sim, uh, the parking brake, for whatever reason, is set to off. You gotta check that. So in this position, it's off. So you just need to click on it. The handle will face downwards. You'll see the tow brakes push forwards. That parking brake is now set to on. So the aircraft ain't going to budge. Next up, we're going to check where our fuel is. So we have our tank selector. We'll have the left, the right, or if you put it in the center like this, it's on both tanks. And we also have a fuel shutoff button over here. We'll press that once just to make sure that the fuel will indeed flow. So we're going to turn on the battery. So this red switch, if you look closely, there's two of them. So one is going to say battery, one is going to say alternator. We're going to turn on the battery and then the alternator as well. Then we'll turn on our beacon and our nav lights. And the reason why we do this is to let people on the ground know, well, we're, we're going to be starting the aircraft. So next up, we're going to put our throttle in one quarter of an inch or one eighth of an inch rather. So it's roughly there. And then we have our mixture over here as well on the right hand side. I have it bound to one of the axes on a joystick or on a throttle, which is super handy because, well, the GA aircraft, you're going to be working on the mixture quite a bit, uh, in particular in the Cessna. So what we're going to do in order to start the aircraft, it's, you know, you got to go two things at the same time. As you turn the starter to on, you'll then introduce the mixture. And then once the engine stabilizes, you can lean it back out again. You don't want to foul the spark plug. So if you left the mixture into rich, there's just too much fuel going in. So if you lean it, it reduces some of the fuel and it just burns a little bit sweeter. Uh, but first and foremost, we want to check to make sure that we have fuel pressure. So if we have a look up here, you can see that you have fuel flow and EGT. That's your exhaust gas temperature. We'll worry about that in another lesson. So to check to make sure that our fuel flow is working, we have a fuel pump switch. When we hit the fuel pump switch, you'll hear the pump start. And if we introduce our mixture, you'll see the fuel flow uh, needle moving ever so slightly. It's so subtle. You can see it there. So that's letting us know there's fuel in the system. So from here, we're now going to turn the starter and engage the engine. So we will say clear prop to make sure there's no one there. Uh, and it's not just clear prop. You got to shout it, uh, usually with the window open and you're alerting people. So the starter procedure, we have our mag switches here on the left hand side down at the bottom with the key. So the first click will go to the right mag. Then you have the left. We want to set them to both. So that's both magnetos are turned on. And when we engage the starter, we're going to introduce mixture into the system. So we'll try it from here. So we'll turn the starter, introduce the mixture. There's the engine now up and running and stabilized. We'll lean our mixture and we'll bring our RPMs back to just under a thousand. So if you have a look at our oil pressure and oil temperature, pressure is going to rise. The temperature is going to rise. The engine is quite stable. So from here, we can now turn on our avionics. So we'll turn on the bus one and bus two as was our want. That's going to power up our autopilot system. The transponder is set. Uh, it should be to either off or standby. By default, it should be off. So we'll leave it on standby mode for the moment. Now, before we get going, you'll notice that there is a discrepancy between our heading indicator and also our compass. So by default, the D or Delta key, that's going to reset the directional indicator. So if we press the D key, that's fixed that. And if you look at our altimeter, well, it says we're well, we're below, <laughs> we're below the ground. So if you press the B key, B for Bravo, that's going to reset your barometric pressure. And that'll give you an accurate reading depending on what your altimeter is set to. So D and B, that's what we do in the sim uh, to make sure that your instruments are now accurate. 
So depending on what you're flying or where you're flying, if you're given a squat code by ATC or you're just going to be flying in VFR, in the United States the VFR is 1200, it's on standby. Uh, we can now put that to altitude reporting. We can turn our taxi lights to on. If we want to check out if we need the pedo heats on or off, that's usually indicated by the temperature uh, that's outside. So over on this dial over here, uh, there's quite a bit of function built into this. So it has outside air temperature and voltmeter. So if we were to click on this button, it'll show we're at 28 volts and the outside air temperature is 66 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 degrees Celsius. We can also change universal time, local time, flight time, just by uh, clicking on the select button here as well. So local time is 11.13. Last but not least then, we can turn on some instrument lighting. Just a matter of putting the mouse over it and you can use the roller ball to bring them up or down. And then finally, we need to reset our aircraft trim. So our trim wheel, if you wanted to know what exactly this does, if you look at the back of the aircraft, As you can see down here from the elevator and your stabilizer, this flap here, or this aileron here, well, this is your pitch trim. So by moving the wheel, the pitch wheel, up or down, see how it moves? So what's important, and it's marked in the aircraft itself, it has take off and it's set. So it's only a matter of getting the line lined up. So we're now trimmed for our takeoff position. So at this stage, with our taxi lights on, we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, if you wanted to program in your autopilot system, you can say, right, we're going to do an initial climb up to 2,000 feet. Uh, squawk is already good to go. Reappear your yoke. And from here, you're good to taxi. So next up is the G1000 variant. So the layout is slightly different, but much the same. So we're gonna press this button to hide the yoke. Uh, depending then, our parking brake is already set and the fuel shutoff valve is already in. So we don't need to change anything here. So that's all good to go. We'll follow the same procedure. We'll get the battery and alternator turned on. Okay. Now on the G1000, it's gonna give you a warning. So you can acknowledge that just by clicking on the warning, clear the alerts. And we should be good to go. We'll do the same again. We'll turn the beacon and nav light on. And we can see the position of our throttle and also our mixture. So throttle is going to go in one eighth of an inch. Uh, the mixture we'll worry about now in a second once we get our fuel pump on. So to see where our fuel flow reading is, it's on a digital display, which is just here. So when we turn on the fuel pump and we bring some mixture in, you'll see where the fuel flow is now live. So we'll turn the pump off uh, and at this stage we can do the same again we'll press the d for delta or directional and b for our barrel that'll reset our altimeter we do have some steam gauges here as a backup as well so we'll do the same thing again we're going to say clear prop and we're going to get the engine started uh, again we'll use our mag switches and we'll introduce some mixture as we do it so with the mixture out we'll turn our mags from the left over to the right and onto boat we'll say clear prop and we'll turn the starter and then introduce the mixture. Engine has now started. We can see that our RPM, we're gonna bring it down to just below a thousand. Somewhere around there will be grand. We'll lean out our mixture as well, roughly to half. At this stage, we can now turn on our avionics. So the bus one and bus two come on. On our second screen, we'll just press this button to activate the screen. And again, we can see our oil temperature and our oil pressure. So the engine instruments are now over here. So we can see our fuel quantity, our vacuum, EGT, which is your exhaust gas temperature. Oil temperature is going to rise. Your pressure will rise as well. And RPMs are doing what they need to do. Uh, also with the G1000, you have the FD or flight director. Basically, this is for your autopilot if you're going to program it in. So we can turn that on. You'll see the purple or magenta wings appear over your own. To jump into your transponder, XPDR, so we'll click on that. Uh, we can have it on standby mode on our altitude reporting. We can go VFR, which would be standard 1200, or if you want to change it, click on code and you can put it in from here. 
and we can backspace and we can go back and then we can go to altitude reporting this is now on which is super uh, to control some of the interior lights you'll notice that they're down here so we can get our uh, panels our standby instruments and also your main avionics turn them on or off uh, with your brightness super handy when you're flying at night time if you need to see what your outside air temperature is doing it's now indicated here on the screen uh, and some of the other bits and bobs with the G1000 it, there's so much information here which is super handy so on our PFD we can actually get some wind information so it'll show us the current wind settings so the wind is blowing four knots coming in at 268 ish or 270 degrees and um, so we can click back over here and then if we want to change our instruments uh, for the autopilot on what systems they're going to follow it's either a VOR frequency or it's going to be onto the GPS you can do it from over here so that's pretty much it we're in a state now where we can turn on the taxi lights we're pretty much ready to go for taxiing and that's it. The G1000, there's so much more information all on the one screen rather than looking at the different steam gauges. So entirely up to what preference you might have when you want to go flying. So guys, that's it for this video. This is the Cessna 172. How to start the engines instead of pressing the control and E. I do hope you found this helpful. Hopefully you learned something from it. And until the next time, we'll see you soon. <laughs>